Good afternoon and welcome to the Midday News. Here's what we have in the bulletin. Prime Minister defends administration's handling of the economy. Picking up the pieces, residents in eastern parishes struggle after heavy rains. And later in sports, GFF issued letter on elections. Thank you for joining us. I'm Shamela Pullen. Here are the details. We begin with news that the Bogwalk Gorge is currently closed due to an unoverturned trailer. TVJ News understands that the trailer driver failed to negotiate a corner and crashed. The container fell off the bridge and into the water. Motorists are being advised to use alternative routes. A staunch defense from Prime Minister Andrew Holness about his administration's handling of the economy. The government and the opposition have been at odds over whether enough is being done to safeguard the bottom line of citizens in the wake of high inflation. Mr. Holness contends that it's because of his administration's stewardship, inflation went up from a height of almost 12 percent to 5.8 percent. Whether it is a hurricane or oil price crisis, whatever it is, and your government was able to find $40 billion. The entire package of care that we gave out through that time is $100 billion. People who lost income because they had to stay home during the pandemic, they got a check to su supplement their income. Almost 400,000 Jamaicans got a grant, all they had to do is sign up for it. When electricity prices went up, we gave a small subsidy. We increased the PATH program continuously. When has that ever happened? The Prime Minister says he's mindful of the issues being faced by citizens. Bad roads, can't get proper public transportation, issues to do with water, issues to do with housing. But because our economy is doing well, you should maintain a hopeful and optimistic posture that your government, with your involvement as citizens holding the government to account will increase the pace at which it delivers the services to you. The Met Service of Jamaica says more rainfall is in the forecast for sections of northern and eastern parishes. This will also affect sections of southern and western Jamaica in the afternoon. Citizens are being advised to exercise caution during this time. Meanwhile, residents in Mount Vernon and St. Thomas are still marooned, following heavy rains over the last few days. They are once again calling on the authorities to intervene and assist them, especially with young children and the elderly living in the so area. And then come and get two parts and come and help you cut out all this so that we can use the chapter to come to clear it. So I don't know when the chapter will come, if it soon come out or Friday. So the chapter is the way I come. Yeah, man, look, I, I give thanks to the camera. I'm strapped on the fan two days now, can't come out and no current. No, no yeah. current, everything has spoiled on in the fridge. You see what I say? But I really want something done today. No? See how we can work it out. You see it? Because I can't move two days now. No? Everything has spoiled in the fridge, no current. Picnic can't go to school because we're on our bush on the for walk and then can't walk across the same. So, all the people can't go to school and then can't cross in the bush in the night. So, over in Portland, residents are reporting landslides in the Bellevue area. Council caretaker for the fellowship division in Portland, Colin Bell, says explains rather the area is now under the radar, especially with more rains in the forecast. Because of the dryness of the soil, we've been having quite a few landslides with the, in all these rains and a lot of them come down on people's house. Yesterday in Bellevue, there's one that come just below the house and um, so we're basically watching it. Mr. Bell is also calling on the local authorities to clean the drains to prevent further flooding. The drains still have not been cleaned. The drains who flood out the people in Berrydale have not yet been cleaned. And we're having rain, so if we get any more torrential rain, those people will be flooded out again. And we're calling on the municipal cooperation 
the deputy mayor them say him in charge of the area to go and clean the drains in Berrydale, the drains in Windsor. Three clean all the drains. Because the one in Berrydale, no amount of rain now wash it out because it's not debris dirt, it's full of come up to earth level now. So it must be clean. More than 100 street vendors in St. James recently received a food handler's permit. Deputy Mayor Richard Vernon shared that prior to this, of the 250 registered vendors, only 5% had a permit. About 130, so we have a, a, about 50, 51, 52% uh, increase in compliance. We are moving from 5%, so that is significant. It is very successful, and I must commend the... The, the, the food vendors because they decided to come out this morning and to participate in the process. Now the Safe Food program goes beyond the food handlers permit. The health inspectors will be visiting the location where they prepare food and to ensure that it is also in keeping with the health protocols. The vendors on Wednesday participated in a one-day workshop under the corporation's food safety program. It was held in collaboration with the St. James Public Health Department and other government agency. The next workshop is scheduled for November 23. It's time for a break. Stay with us. More stories when we return. Welcome back to the Midday News. The Education Ministry has announced that some 100,000 parents are to receive training. Education Minister Favel Williams, who made the announcement at Wednesday's post-cabinet press briefing, says this will be done through the National Parenting Support Commission. It is a collaborative approach to stem violence and increase parental support in schools across the island. Mrs. Williams says all public education institutions are mandated to participate in the training program. The delivery plan has been formulated and shared with schools across Jamaica, outlining the new target of providing a minimum of 100,000 parents with parenting education and training, as well as strategies to be employed in reaching this target. All public and registered private educational institutions are required to deliver parenting education training to their parent populations. The Education Minister also says the National Parenting Support Commission is collaborating with stakeholders across local institutions to ensure all necessary guidelines are properly communicated and understood. Coordinating meetings with education officers, school administrators, guidance counselors, deans of discipline, and other helping services professionals in schools to ensure that CSP guidelines, which is Citizen Security Program Guidelines, are understood. The meetings serve as a guarantee that the quality of the parenting education program will not be compromised. National Parenting Support Commission's officers continue to provide oversight by making daily contact with school personnel for the provision of technical support. It's now time for the Business Minute. Delays are being experienced at one of Jamaica's major ports. Kingston Freeport Terminal Limited says the vessel delays are as a result of increased transshipment volumes from particular shipping lines whose feedering network has not been able to keep up with the recent influx of containers. It says only certain shipping lines have been affected while others continue to operate smoothly. This comes at a time when businesses are looking to clear goods for the Christmas period. KFTL says the situation has led to high congestion at its terminal despite efforts to keep the domestic market supply chain flowing efficiently. Further afield, the United Auto Workers Union and Ford reached a tentative labor deal on Wednesday night. The agreement sets the stage to return 16,000 striking workers to the job within days. In its statement Wednesday night, Ford said it was pleased to have reached a tentative agreement. The deal reportedly gives union workers at Ford an immediate 11% pay increase and then pay hikes beginning at 25% over the next four plus years. And that's it for the Business Minute. I'm Shane Masters. Time now for the top regional and international stories.
In the region, police in Suriname has launched an investigation into the circumstances that led to bullets being fired upon a radio station in the country. Unknown assailants fired shots at Radio Lim FM where the manager and owner Clifton Limburg resides with his family. No one was injured. The Surinamese Association of Journalists has since strongly condemned the attack. On the international scene, Police in Lewiston, Maine has expanded lockdown following yesterday's mass shooting that left 16 people killed and dozens injured. The area's 38,000 residents woke up this morning to a shelter order advising them not to leave their homes as the suspect is still at large. Schools are closed, businesses are closed, stay home with your loved ones right now and just pray for the victims um, of last night's terrible tragedy. And Australian Prime Minister Anthony Albanese has announced an additional 15 million in humanitarian aid to civilians in Gaza. This brings the total aid from Australia to $25 million. Speaking alongside U.S. President Joe Biden in Washington, D.C. yesterday, Albany said this will help deliver life-saving assistance such as emergency water and medical services. And those were the top regional and international stories. I'm Raquel Porter. We head to a quick break. When we come back, we'll have your midday sports report with Spencer Darlington.